Hello and welcome back to another From the Workshop. I'm your host, Brandon Hart, and we are this time in the Nimblelink Nerd Lair. So, um, we've been talking about a lot of different things over the course of this video series, and one of the things that I think we may have left out um, is what you see before us here. So, no big secret, this time we want to talk about antennas. And, and I'll sort of generalize and say RF considerations, RF uh, um, design to a certain extent. So, first of all, right at the top, disclaimer, I am not an RF engineer. I do not pretend to be one on podcasts. I am... This is this is black magic as far as I'm concerned. However, there are some things that that in working in the industry and uh, working with the engineers here at NimbleLink that are are pretty common tips, pretty common tricks, and things that that I thought we would just pass along um, that also come through as frequently asked questions too. So. This could be very, very helpful for those of you who have never really done anything in terms of RF design and, and antenna selection and, and things of that nature. So hopefully this is helpful. All right, so let's assume that you are getting started building your Internet of Things device. You want to put in a NimbleLink Skywire modem. You want to make sure that you get the best performance out of the whole system and that everything works really well. Um, so you can see right over here, we've got two different Skywire modems. And there's a pretty significant difference between these two modems here. First of all, this guy, as you can see, only has one antenna connector on it. This one over here, on the other hand, has two antenna connectors on it. And that's not an arbitrary de decision. It wasn't uh, to make it look more attractive or anything like that. This was actually for a very, very good reason. This one, with only the single antenna on it, is a 2G CDMA device. This is a 1XRTT Skywire modem. It does not benefit in any way from having a second uh, antenna connection on it. It doesn't have received diversity. It won't even use the uh, antenna signal from that secondary antenna anyway, even if it was provided. On the other hand, this guy, the uh, uh, Cat 3 Skywire modem, which is an LTE modem, requires two antennas. LTE is a MIMO technology. It requires both a primary and a diversity antenna. And so if you don't have both antennas, it, it, it is not going to work properly. Uh, you will see a significant hit on the improvement. And, and quite frankly, it is not approved. It is not certified to be used with only a single antenna. I'm going to point out one last thing here. On this Cat 3, we also have another antenna connector on here. How sneaky. That antenna connector on the underside of the modem is used to bring out the GPS radio functionality that's included in this particular model. So if you're looking at a Skywire modem, if you're using a Skywire modem that has a GPS radio, that's where you're going to look for that GPS connection. Okay, so with that being said, so now you, you kind of have an idea of one antenna, two antenna. Um, what is that second antenna used for in, in modems that require it? Uh, and basically the idea there is, if kind of think about it this way. If you have two antennas, and those two antennas are both receiving signal, but they are slightly separated from each other, they're going to receive just slightly different signals on, on those two different antennas. And the usable signal can essentially be filtered out of all the background noise by looking at the differences in the signal that's received by those two different antennas. That's your received diversity. RF engineers in the audience are probably cringing at that explanation, but that's essentially the, the, the idea behind a received diversity antenna. Um, so, quick tip, pro tip for you. If you hook your antenna to the secondary antenna jack, and your modem says that it's got good signal and it won't work for some reason, that's because it's the received diversity antenna uh, and it will not help you with transmit and uh, you're, you're quite frankly probably not gonna be able to receive very well either. Note that there is always a label. There's your primary antenna and your secondary antenna, antenna one, antenna two. 
make sure you're looking for those things when you hook up your antennas. It's going to make a big difference. Okay, that being said, what's the next thing that you need to think about when you're trying to figure out how to properly set up your device and configure device for use on the LTE or CDMA or HSPA uh, or M1 or whatever network you're trying to connect to? It's the frequencies. So antennas ultimately are there to pick up on signal, on, on radio waves. And the frequencies of those radio waves are what determine what antenna, what design, for the most part, you need. So first thing to do is research the network that you're trying to connect to, figure out what frequencies are used on that network, and then make sure you're getting an antenna that is matched for those frequencies. We a lot of times see customers who had CDMA and devices before, uh, or GSM devices before, and think they can just simply use the same antenna when they move to LTE. Not the case. Primarily because LTE here in the United States uses the 700 megahertz frequency, which is typically below the range that most of the previous cellular antennas pick up on. Those are usually 800 and higher. Um, so then they don't get very good performance using the same antenna they had before and they don't understand why. So very important to check the data sheet in this case. Uh, so something to bear in mind. The other thing to bear in mind is, uh, particularly with LTE, there is a wide range of frequencies that is used. So here in the United States, there are frequencies that go all the way from that 700 megahertz I was talking about earlier, and maybe in the future even down to 600 megahertz, all the way up to 2100 megahertz, I think is the highest that I'm, I'm aware of at the moment. Um, so you have to have an antenna that is capable uh, and, and does a good job of picking up frequencies throughout that entire range if you want to have all of the usable spectrum and bandwidth and, uh, and frequencies that have been set aside by the carriers for use on that network. So important to keep in mind. Okay, with that said, the other thing you want to remember is that it's not all about signal strength. And, and that's gonna fly in the face of a lot of things. You know, if you look at your phone, you see that you have four bars, then everything must be good. But the truth is there's more to usable RF signal than just the strength of that signal coming in. Um, you could have a very noisy, uh, lots of interference, and, and have a great signal, or sorry, great signal strength, but have a low quality and, and hardly usable at all type of signal. Uh, it's the same thing as if looking at your phone, you've got a, a, you know four bars of signal, but you can't make a phone call. Doesn't really work, doesn't really help you to have strong signal if it's not usable signal. So there's a difference between strength and quality. And that kind of gets us into your RF design considerations as well. And, and knowing that you want to build a device, you want it to work properly, and maybe you want it to work on batteries, or you want it to um, you know, uh, uh, have the lowest possible components and, and so you're not necessarily planning for huge bursts of power you draw. Uh, remember that a weak signal means that the radio is going to boost its power as much as possible to reach that weak signal, reach that distant tower and pull in that signal. So all of a sudden your radio that was using maybe, uh, you know, 200 milliamps is going to burst up and try to, you know, maybe it's going gonna, it's gonna to burst up to a full amp, maybe even higher when it's trying to get that really weak signal or transmit through that, uh, that really weak signal, that really distant tower. Um, so the better your antenna setup is, the better your power uh, situation, your power draw is going to be also. So kind of a... a Nice tip there. The other thing you can do is when you're designing your board, we'll just use this as an example. So when you're designing your board, you wanna make sure that you're doing certain things which are kind of easy to avoid. So for one thing, you'll notice that our power is over here and our antennas are on the opposite side of the board. So you wanna separate out parts that could cause additional RF noise and, and introduce noise into the circuitry and, you know, don't don't run your run your antenna connections or your RF connections right by noisy components like inductors and 
and power connectors and things like that. You're just asking for trouble when you do that kind of thing. Um, the other part to, to be aware of when you're designing is ground plane. Ground plane is a crucially important consideration for RF for antennas, for receiving good quality signal. Just to give you an example, these two antennas are uh, will give you exactly the same performance, believe it or not, these two antennas will. The difference here is that this one has its own internal ground plane. So this one doesn't require that you have a massive ground plane in your circuit. This one has its own ground plane, so you can pretty much hook this into uh, to a small device and have it work very, very well. This one, on the other hand, requires an external ground plane. So this one requires that you've got a big ground plane, that you've got a, a larger device, typically, in order to accommodate that larger ground plane, but the antenna itself can be nice and small. So that's kind of a nice thing to think about. The other thing is, what is your enclosure made of? Is it metal? Is it plastic? Um, you know, do you have a whole bunch of copper mesh all over the place in your, in your box? Those things will affect your signal. And if you've got a metal box, that can be really good for signal, but now you need to bring out your antenna connection to the outside of your box rather than leaving it on the inside, say with you know, one of these types of antennas <clears throat> or the design we've got here, which is using an internal antenna, a chip antenna on the board right here. If this was a metal enclosure, this would not work. As good as this antenna may be, it would not work on the inside of that uh, case right there. Okay, so we're kind of running through a lot of things here, but, uh, but stick with me because there are a couple other things that we can talk about. Um, first of all, if we go back to our little dev kit here, you'll notice that we've got on the Skywire modem, we've got these U.FL connectors on the board and so you can have antennas like these guys from our friends over at Tau Glass that have U.FL connectors directly on them so you can just pop these right on and for the most part you're good to go however these antennas are generally designed to work inside of an enclosure if you don't have that situation if you need to get outside of your enclosure then instead you would use one of these guys here this is a U.FL to SMA antenna adapter. So that would go right on there. We've actually got some built into our dev kit here. So we can just use those. Bam, pop that on. Now we've got SMA connectors that we can use to plug in a standard SMA antenna. Just like that right there. So now we've got an antenna that if we had fully screwed it in would actually stand up. Um, but uh, we've got an antenna that will work with our U.FL connector on the Skywire modem. So just something to kind of be aware of. If you're looking at these types of antennas, just know that the antenna connector that's on them will require an adapter in order to plug in to the Skywire directly. Okay. So how, do, how does all of this, how does the use of the antenna affect your certifications? for the Skywire modem. Because remember, one of the great things about the Skywire modem is that it is fully in-device certified. So what does using this antenna versus this antenna have to do with certifications? And in general, I'm gonna keep this very generalized, in general, as long as you are using an antenna which has a similar gain to the ones that were used during testing for certification, you're good to go. You can use those, you're not going to have a problem, the certifications bodies aren't going to have a problem, the carriers won't have a problem with it. Um, if you want to know the details around what those antennas that were used for the testing are, just shoot us a message, reach out, we're happy to help. Um, Product.support at nimblelink.com is a great place to reach out for that. We can get you information about it. We'll also do you one better by give you a, be giving you a list of antennas that we have used, like these, that we have used in the past. We know they work, we know they perform well, and would work well for your particular design as well. And to, uh, to kind of expand upon the support that we'll give you, we'll also do things like 
um, review your board design. So maybe you're designing your board, you don't really know if you've got it right, you may have made some, uh, some mistakes that could cause problems, um, you know, maybe the board isn't well enough grounded or whatever the case may be. Uh, we're happy to review your design schematics. Um, so we wanna make sure that you have a successful design, that way you buy Skywire modems, that way everybody wins, and uh, you have a successful product as well. Um, we'll also, uh, we can refer you to third parties. So again, I'm not an RF engineer. We have antennas that we have used and we know work. We're happy to refer you to some of those companies that can uh, do some testing, do some custom RF design for you as well. If none of these antennas will work, then there may be a custom one that you can build also. So, lots of information, kind of threw it at you all there, but um, a lot of good things that we get customer questions on quite frequently. So, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you'll join us for the next From the Workshop. Please do subscribe so you don't miss that video when it comes out. And feel free to, uh, to leave a thumbs up, put some notes in the comments, and, and let us know how you liked it. And until then, thank you very much, and see you on the next From the Workshop.